you just get a cough and you're already there. Ah, I've got flu. You know, it's, it, and, and if you had just responded negatively to refuse that symptom, you know, it only, it only changes from symptom to sickness when you accept it or yield yourself to it. Just like how temptation only changes into sin when you yield yourself to it, right? So thing is as much part of the grace package as forgiveness of sins you know sometimes we all know that no forgiveness of sins definitely belongs to me it's part of the grace package but healing is actually on the same level it says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god what is the knowledge of god by his stripes we were healed the knowledge of god is that i i live in divine health that's that's the thing is the knowledge of god has to become our knowledge guys the when you're still in that position where you have external knowledge it's a problem Grace Goodies, this is the series we're in, and he just started um, also talking about healing as part of the grace package, right? So we know that grace is everything, um, that just, it's unmerited favor, everything Jesus did for us out of his goodness and his love for us, he packaged it in something called grace, and there's so many elements to it, there's healing, there's prosperity, there's, there's just so many things, but right now we're talking about healing. And healing is just a funny one because um, usually when you go to a church full of young people, it's the least interesting thing. Like, it's like <laughs> we have bigger problems. We're trying to get the dollar. Like, don't tell me about healing, right? Like, even if you ask people, like, um, who of you here are sick or struggling with sickness, like, the hands will be so few. But if I say, who needs more money in their bank account, everyone is like, you know? So, um, but it is really an important topic, you know? Um, I think as someone who's seen, I remember when I was in varsity and I, I, I had a friend who was, like, she was so into the things of God. And I remember speaking to her, we were, like, on the phone, what a no, it wasn't WhatsApp at the time. Was it BBM? I can't remember. But, like, we spoke for so, for so long. Like, you know, those random chats because uh, school was closed. We were on a break at Vids at that time. And, like, literally two weeks later, I'm hearing she's in hospital. What's wrong with her? So I'm just thinking it's a light thing because, I mean, I just spoke to you two weeks ago. She's in hospital. Next thing... She's got lupus. Like, everything was escalating so fast. She's got lupus. Two weeks later, she's dead. I'm just like, no. Like, you know, it just did something in me to be like, I can't believe how fast the devil can escalate things, you know, in terms of health. And sometimes because you've lived um, a fairly healthy life, it just kind of slips your mind that you also need to train yourself in this area of healing, of divine health, you know. And so... Mostly when we attend or when we hear sermons on healing, it's mostly us being told that it's part of the grace package, it's available to you, but you don't really know how to operate it. You don't know what to do and what happens, you know, and those are the things I've been looking at. Like, I, I, I look at people who go through situations, like healing situations, and I'm always like to God, if I was in that situation, like, was I going to deal? How was, was I going to come out victorious? And sometimes when, like, um, like... I, I don't remember when, but like, you know, when you are randomly attacked by your flu and stuff, and you're like, if flu is doing this to me, like if it's serious, <laughs> you know? And so it's those things that really get me thinking and concerned, and I, I think that's why I, I, I've been like really interested in this topic and just allowing God to teach me, you know, some stuff on it. So let's start with just being on the same page that the issue of sickness really, it has been dealt with by the Lord, right? Um, and that healing and divine health, so not just healing, healing and divine health. It's possible to live in divine health where you just don't get sick, right? So healing and divine health are both part of the grace package, right? And it's as much, you know, it's so real that, like, healing is as much part of the grace package as forgiveness of sins, you know. Sometimes we all know that no forgiveness of sins definitely belongs to me. It's part of the grace package. But healing is actually on the same level. I remember there's a story when, when Jesus healed, um, I think it was a paralyzed man, um, and he said to him, your sins are forgiven you. And then 
you can go, right? And then the Pharisees and everyone were like, yo, this guy is blaspheming. Like, how can you say that? And he actually said, what's easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or take up your mat and go. You know, it's really, the, it's on the same level. So as much as forgiveness of sins is part of the grace package, healing is also part of the grace package. Amen. So let's look at some scriptures concerning that. Let's start in the Old Covenant. Let's go to Psalm chapter 103, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. It says, bless the Lord, right, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, right? Who forgives all your iniquities? And what else does he do? He heals all your diseases. Imagine this was in the old covenant and people were already having such promises, you know. Um, and then also let's go to, this, is, this just shows you, um, divi- I mean, healing was a blessing in the Old Testament. It was part of the blessings, right? If you served God, you know there were conditions in the Old Testament for you to experience blessings. And one of the blessings was healing. Let's go to Exodus 23, 25. It says, so you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Like, it's so weird that um, I heard someone say this, and I had to go check it out myself. Um, There was, like, take, the term take and away are actually the same term. It's actually the exact same term, and it actually means to turn off sickness in the midst of you. So it's, it was possible even in the old covenant to live in divine health. It was part of the blessings, right? And then now you know that in the new covenant, Jesus, say, like Jesus has given us every spiritual blessing that we need to live a, a glorious life, a, just a successful life. We've been given every spiritual blessing, right? And part of the blessings are these things, divine health and healing, right? So let's quickly go to Ephesians 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So every blessing that you've ever heard of in the Bible, you've been blessed with it, right? So healing is part of those blessings. You've been blessed with it. Divine health is part of those blessings, and you've been blessed with it. And as children of God, we need to get to a point where we really refuse anything contrary to that. Like anything contrary to blessing is cursed. You know that. So anything contrary to healing and divine health, we refuse it, right, in Jesus' name. So we've established this, right? So let's, we've established that, right? We can receive healing. We can live in divine health, right? Amen. So 3 John 1, 2. This was the scripture that Pastor Tate was looking at last week. 3 John, verse one, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. And guys, these are the benefits. We spoke about it, like Pastor Tate spoke about it. It's just the benefits of being a child of God. Like the Bible actually tells us that you can't receive anything except it be given to you from above. And as children of God, I think we really sleep on those benefits. And we get, like, I mean, like how he was saying, there has to be a difference between you and uh, someone who doesn't serve God. They might have more money than you and whatnot, but at least get those things, you know, that are in the grace package, which prosperity is actually part of them. So um, there are benefits to this thing. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. King James, please. The real Bible. (laughs) Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I, you know, he says, I wish above all things. He was literally speaking the heart of God. This is what God wishes for us, you know. He was saying, I wish above all things that you may prosper. So not just financial prosperity, to just do well in life generally. So he says, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. I always found this interesting because for me, if I had written this scripture, I would have said, 
Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper even as your soul prospers. Because health is part of just having a good life in general. But I find it interesting that they had to separate it and put it there on its own, you know. Uh, it says, so I, that um, thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So to the measure that your soul is prospering, right? So to the measure that you are doing well inside of you. So you can't be doing well out there and inside you're not doing well. So it's really dependent on how you are doing um, I don't want to say spiritually because then we confuse it because in your spirit you are perfect. You've received the fullness of God, right? So it, to the measure of how you're doing mentally, emotionally, whatnot, those, that internal thing in your soul, right, which the major thing is the mind, right? So, um, so this is the scripture. I, I, and <sighs> Guys, health is, you know health, you know you can be poor, and still live, guys. You can still live. You can even get used to it and still serve God and live. But there's something about health. It just cuts off your purpose in life. It cuts off. It just cripples everything. And I think, you know, we need to get to a point where we take it seriously and we take our exercising our faith in that, um, in that area very seriously. I know the reason I'm, I keep repeating it is because I know with young people, health is not a big deal. You know, and because it's not a big deal, we sleep on it. We sleep on exercising our faith in that area. And that's why I keep stressing it to be like, as much as it might be far-fetched in your mind right now, just open just be open-minded about it, you know. If you haven't gone through a serious sickness, for you it might be so far-fetched, like I can't relate. But really, this is something you really need to exercise yourself in, amen. So anyway, it says, I wish that you may be in health. To be in health, it's either you've been healed. Something happened and you were healed, so you were restored back to health, or you've just lived a good life, a healthy life, right? So these these are the two these are the two um, things of how you could be in health, right? And for you to 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 receive healing, yeah. Healing, it's, <laughs> Christians are very funny, but healing you can receive in two ways. It's either I just attend a conference and someone is really operating in these gifts of healing, right? I can, I can attend a conference and someone is operating in these gifts of healing and they just pray for me and I'm healed. So you are receiving this healing through someone else. Even if they are not operating in those gifts of healing, but um, they, they're exercising their faith for you to be healed, helping you with your faith and you receive from them. Or you can do it on your own, right? Where you build up your own faith and you exercise your own faith to receive healing, right? So th that's, those are the two parts I want to talk about and how you can do it, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you need healing. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. going to go through a lot of scriptures, and it won't be as motivational as <laughs> I would have wanted it to be, but it's just, I just want us to have practical things to do if we find ourselves in a place where we need healing. Amen. So I'm going to read this. It says, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So the point of these gifts are what to profit the, the brethren, right? You can't use gifts of the Spirit on yourself. You know that, right? So <laughs> you can't use gift of prophecy on yourself. You can't use gift of healing on yourself. It's for, the Bible is clear, it's for the saints, right? Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, <laughs> what, what did I, oh yes, on myself. <laughs> um, so for the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Next verse. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. You know, it is so interesting. I was like thinking about it and looking at these gifts of, of the spirit and how most of them really overlap. Like when you think of gifts of healing and faith, I mean, it's like they can't work one on their own. And when you think of working of miracles and healing, most healings are miraculous healing. So they kind of overlap. And it's interesting. I've been actually reading about it. It's interesting that 
you know those terms to another. So every time they list the new gift, they say to another, to another this was given, to another this was given. It's interesting that to another is not the same as the other to another that we've read. They're actually two different words, two different terms. The one is saying um, a different gift of the same kind. The other one is saying a different gift of the same kind. So you see there, let's go back. Let me just, it's an aside. It's not really. But it says, for to one is given the spirit, the spirit oh, to, so to one is given by the spirit the word of knowledge, right? And then that to another is another gift of the same kind. So word of wisdom and word of knowledge are of the same kind, right? And then if you go to the next verse, this to another is a different one of a different kind. So faith is of a different kind. It's another um, what, gift of a different kind. And then, but when you go to another gift of healing, is actually another gift of the same kind. So they, from there, you can actually group them in that way. So uh, let's go on to the next one. To another, the working of miracles, still the same class. This is the second group. The first group was word of knowledge and wisdom, right? Uh, this is the same class. Now we're still in the same class. To another, working of miracles. Hence, they overlap the ones in the same class here. Yeah. Um, working of miracles. To another, prophecy, still same class. To another, discerning of spirits, same class. To another, diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. Next. So, so go back again. Sorry, I didn't show you that one. To another day uh, where you talk about diverse tongues, it changes again of a different kind. So then it's tongues and interpretation in the same group. So that first group is word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and then the next group you have your uh, miracles, faith, prophecy, um, Healing, yes, thank you. And then there's another group here, which is tongues and interpretation of tongues, right? Um, next verse. But all these worketh that one and the same self and the self same spirit, dividing, uh, dividing to every man severally as he will. So these are the gifts of the spirit, right? And um, what I want you to understand about the gifts of the Spirit, because sometimes people are so dependent on that. You find someone going from conference to conference, church, you know, but when you're sick, we can't even blame you because sometimes you're just so desperate to be healed, you know, um, that um, people don't understand that it's, it's not really the only way for you to be healed, right? There's, there, there's no, like, bad way to get healed, but there's a better way you know, to get healed, where you yourself, you are exercising, right, your own faith. And that's what I really want to talk about. But anyway, while we're still here on the gift of the Spirit, I want us to think about this. I was talking to Pastor Tate about this, and I was asking him this question to say, so if I'm here and I pray with you or I lay my hands, or like how the Bible tells you that these signs shall follow them that believe, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So if someone is laying hands on the sick, Today's a Bible class. <laughs> it's laying hands on the sick and they recover. Does that mean you're operating in the, sp in the gift of healings? The he gifts of healing? Question. Is it automatically that? Okay, memes tell us. <laughs> Bishop Victor, what do you think? I just found it interesting, right, um, that, that, that it's that. But I, I'm sure, like, what Mimi was saying, it's not the same just because I am, um, like, I can lay my hands. Every believer should be able to do that. As long as you have faith to do that, you should be able to do that. But there are people who have just that special empowerment to do it, and they do it almost as a specialty. Have you seen them? Like, have you seen Benny Hinn? It's like no effort. Like, <laughs> you know, they just, you know, it's like the same way with, the prophetic, there are people who just have that gift and they just work with it, right? And um, so anyway, talking about that gift, most people just go from conference to conference just trying to get that gift, you know? And sometimes it's not available. It's not readily available, guys. Imagine being sick and having to look for Benny Hinn. Like, or imagine being... <laughs> Oh, imagine. 
imagine being, being sick and having to, I remember in those days, I'd be like, there was a friend of mine who the child was born um, kind of paralyzed. And we believed so much until I was like, you know, at this point, if I were her, I was going to take a flight and go to TB Joshua's church like, and just get my child prayed for, you know. And desperate situations, um, you know, they call for such things, right? So anyway, let's go to Mark 16, verse 17 to 18. I'm just showing you the different ways of like how you can get healing. It's not the crux of my message. I want to focus on the part where you believe for healing for yourself. Amen. So we will get there where we just actually look at the crux of that. Here I'm just showing you different options that are available to you. It says that, and these signs shall, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, right? They shall take up serpents, and if they drink... Any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, there it is, and they shall recover. So there are benefits to being in a community where people can operate in faith. They can lay hands on you and you can recover, right? So uh, the next one, James 5, 14 to 16. Let me get, just get through them and then we'll focus on what I want to focus on. It says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Next. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, right? So it's the prayer of faith, right? It shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So in a community, you can also receive healing when you have brethren, you know, that can operate their faith, right? So we said through um, gifts of healing and in a community through other believers, right? Um, and we said there's no bad way to receive healing, but there's a better way where you're actually exercising your own faith. And that's what I want us to look at today. So let's go to Galatians 22 verse 23. Galatians 22 verse 23. Can we all say, I can receive my own healing? I can receive my own healing. Amen. Galatians 5. Did I say 32? Oh, I said, I said verse 22. Okay. Galatians 5 verse 22. It says, but the, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and what? Faith. Next, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Hallelujah. So you see that you already, I know in a lot of tra uh, uh, translations or other versions, they say instead of faith, they say faithfulness. But we did say King James is the real Bible. King James says faith. So we all received the, the, this, um, this fruit, right, yeah. of the Spirit called faith. So you have faith already. I don't want you to think, and Pastor Tate taught of this, so don't think of it like I'm lacking an element of faith or whatnot. As much as you got peace and joy and everything, gentleness, you also got faith as a fruit of the Spirit, right? John 15, verse 1 to 10. John 15, verse 1 to 10. And I just want to show you how you can actually make your faith work, right? The key thing to making this faith work because at the end of the day, you receiving your own miracle is mainly dependent on you exercising the faith, right? So John 15, we're gonna read verse one to 10 quickly. And because it is quite long and King James might just throw me off, maybe a lighter one. <laughs> John 15 verse 1 to 10 says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he taketh away. He takes away, right? And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit, right? You are already clean. Why? Because of the word which I have spoken to you. Next verse. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Next verse. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Next verse. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out 
right, as a branch, as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Next verse. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. Next, um, are we on? Next verse. By this my father is glorified, right? By you what? That you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. But it says, how do you bear this much fruit? By abiding in him. By abiding what? In the word of God, right? As the Father loved me, right? I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Next verse. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That's how you abide in God's love, by keeping his commandments, you know. And by commandments, we're not really talking about the law. We're just saying living the word, you know. Um, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Do you see the stressing of abiding, abiding in the word? Jesus is the living word. So abiding in the word, keeping the commandments is abiding in the word. And that's the key thing when it comes to this faith that you already have for you to work it. The, the, the number one thing that you have to be doing is abiding in the word of God. Amen. So it's all about mind renewal, guys. For you to manifest any fruit of the spirit, actually, all those, all, all those that we read from your peace to your joy to faith, the main thing is you abiding in the word. Amen. Amen. And you see, you see there, like, you saw it. You are with me when I say any fruit of the Spirit, because it did say for you to produce fruit. So it's not, I know fruit in the Bible, it refers to a lot of things. Sometimes it's fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes it's fruit of righteousness. Sometimes it talks about you when you make disciples, that those are fruits, you know. But for you to manifest any fruit of the Spirit or experience it, the Bible says you need to abide in the Word. So that's how it is. And, 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 and it's really, it speaks to that parable that Pastor Tate always teaches about, the parable of the sower, where the sower went about and he was sowing, seed everywhere, the word, right? Seed being the word and the different grounds being the heart. And it was just showing how the ground that received the word, how it produced fruit. Remember, it produced so much fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, some 100-fold, but it's because it was one. It understood the word was one with the word and the word abided in it and it obviously received the word, amen. So your soul is just that ground. Like I was laughing, I was thinking about it. You no, know, faith, faith is just a noun. Like it's not like a verb or doing things, just a noun. It's something you received, but it's something in the kingdom that is needed to appropriate every grace, right? That you that is available to you. But it's a noun. There's something else that <laughs> that should be a verb to I, I don't know how to put it. Like I didn't do did I do, yeah, did we do it in metric? You know, can't trust our metric systems. But <laughs> faith is a noun, and the doing word is really believing, and you do that with your heart, right? Oh, yeah. So faith is a noun, the, the believing, working your faith is what we call believing, and that happens in your heart, and that's why the word of God is so important for it to be planted in your heart, for that faith that is already in your spirit to be able to draw all of those graces to you, amen? Amen. So um, let's go to Psalm 107, verse 20. Even in that parable, like I know when we say fruit, usually we talk about the parable of the sower. We talk about results like... Um, like random results, like prosperity or whatnot, but what the fruit there, the, the fruit that the word is uh, presenting there is, or the fruit that the word is bringing if it goes on good ground is really faith, right? Um, so let's go to Psalm 107 verse 20. It says, he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So we said what? The word is needed for, for it to build faith in you and faith is what can appropriate that uh, healing or whatever you are looking for in the grace package. Hence it's saying here, the word is what was sent to heal you because it's the key thing to you getting to that point where you're appropriating healing, right? So he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Another one, 
Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. It says, my son, give attention. Okay, with these shorter ones, we can go back to King James. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Next verse. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Next verse. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. So as long as you are abiding in the word of God, like you should have this confidence that it is life to me. It's the, it's the life that I need, right? And it is health to my flesh, you know? So sometimes you don't need to get to a point where you get sick or whatnot. Just always abiding in the word of God will keep you at this place of health, where it's just health to your flesh. And if you find yourself in a situation where you do need healing, the word of God is health to your flesh. It can bring that health to your flesh. Amen. Amen. So we, d- we established that the key thing in you appropriating your healing is what? Faith, which comes by the word of God. Amen. So there are a few points that I want us to go through for you to be able to win. Like if you're in a journey where you're trying to appropriate healing, right? Uh, besides faith, faith is the key thing. But there's one, there's one of the things is you need to know your stance, you know. Just know where you stand. Sometimes people are so confused. Like, you're like, should I confess that I'm sick? Should I, what should I say? When I go to the doctor, how do I explain to them without confessing that? How? It's just a, a, a confusing thing. But this is one thing that I've really learned. Like, um, is that you know symptoms that come to you, to your body, whether it be coughing, whether it be whatever you, you start feeling, those symptoms. Those symptoms are to sickness, like what temptation is to sin. It's like, as my, like it's like, how, how can I put it? It's like, it's presenting itself and it's waiting for a response from you. It's like how temptation is to sin. Imagine how the devil went to Jesus and started tempting him. Imagine Jesus then crying, oh, I've sinned, I've sinned, I've sinned. Like, it's just crazy. It's the same thing with with, uh, healing and sickness and how it works. Sometimes, guys, you just get a cough and you're already there. Ah, I've got flu. You know, it's... and, and if you had just responded negatively to refuse that symptom, you know, it only, it only changes from symptom to sickness when you accept it or yield yourself to it. Just like how temptation only changes into sin when you yield yourself to it, right? So always know your stance. Always, like, don't be confused, you know. Sometimes you're so confused. Oh, I've got a headache. Okay, should I say headache? I have a headache. I have what? No. As long as you haven't accepted it, it is not sickness to you. You are not sick, you know. Um, So this is. Let's go to James chapter four, verse seven. That's what we call resisting. It's what we call actively fighting against whatever the devil is presenting to you. It says, "Submit yourselves, therefore, to God." resist the devil and he will flee from you. Like, it's, it's just amazing. Like, when I just sit down, I love listening to testimonies on healing, to be honest. Like, I can sit the whole day and listen to it on TV. Um, you, you, you'll hear from people that, um, like people who had symptoms come to them or something like that, who didn't really, who knew their stuff, like who knew where they stand. They'd be like, oh, the devil tried to do this and this, and then I just refused it, and I didn't uh, accept that. And I just carried on with my life, and I don't even know when it went away. Most people say, I was listening to this lady who had, uh, what's this hair loss condition? That one. Yes, that one. Um, That one. (laughs) So, <laughs> so she was actually talking about it, how she suffered from, not suffered from, it's like that's what was happening to her hair, like it was so bad, but she never accepted it. She just went on with her life and just kept saying, oh, I've got nice hair, I've got, like, just really 
did not accept what the devil was throwing at her. And she just kept going on. It's like, I didn't wear a wig. I didn't, like, I just kept going on like it's normal. And that's what she was doing. And so they were asking her, because they were interviewing, the, so, interviewing her. So they're like, so when did your hair actually grow back? She's like, I don't even know. I just saw it like this, you know. It's because you, you are at that point where you're like, I don't have this. Like, you are, you are, you are refusing it. So that's, a, that's, that's the main thing. Always know it. Do not be confused. The minute you are confused, that's the minute the devil is going to have you for lunch. Like, just do not... Do not <laughs> Just do not be confused. Just know where you stand, that this is a symptom. It's coming. It's being presented to me, and I am not submitting myself to it. Amen. I remember I was listening to this. Yo, this, this was one of the things that really moved me to take healing seriously when I saw how other people take it seriously. Like I was listening to this man of God, and he was saying, yo, um, he had this fever just come on him from nowhere. And it was so bad, it was at night. And he could have easily just stood up and went and taken medication or gone to the hospital. But he was like, I was like, no, I am not going to submit to this. I am not sick. He was like, I couldn't even walk, but I was like, tonight I am not even going to sleep because sleeping means that I'm saying my body is sick or something. He's like, I'm not even going to sleep. He says, I couldn't even stand, but I even kneeled on the floor reading my Bible. I, I wanted to walk around, but because I couldn't even stand, I was, I was crawling on the floor with my Bible. I say I wasn't going to sleep and with my head in my Bible, pushing it around like this, reading it, saying, I'm not going to sleep because I'm not sick. I was like, guys, do people take this that seriously? And it was like, it's not that if there's something wrong with me taking medication or whatever, but it's because I wanted to make sure that I'm building my faith in this area. Because these things start with a headache, and then next thing, I'm so used to just... Yeah, taking a panado, I'm just used to going to the doctor quickly or whatnot, that there comes a serious situation where the doctor says, yo, even I can't help you. And then you're like, now there, you don't know how to exercise your own faith, amen. So that's the thing. Like in everything, just be intentional. And sometimes I know like I'd be not feeling well and I'm like, yo, I want to fight this, you know, this symptom and, you know, just stand in faith. And then I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be behind with my work. I'm going to be, like, you just think of a lot of things and you're like, it's just easier to drink my medication and just carry on. But guys, I'm telling you, it's so beneficial to build your faith in this area, to just refuse. Where the devil, you know, the devil will try you many times until he's like, ah, like Pastor Ted always says, he's the most impatient person. So sometimes he knows you need to just resist him, like that scripture says, actively fight against him until he flees. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. I love this scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? By his stripes we were healed. The knowledge of God is that I, I live in divine health. That's, that's, the thing is, the knowledge of God has to become our knowledge, guys. The when you're still in that position where you have external knowledge, it's a problem. But if the knowledge of God is your knowledge, you're like, I don't know anything outside of this. What I know is that I am, I am the healed of God. What I know is that I live in divine health. When anything contrary to that presents itself, you can fight it and you can refuse it. Amen. So this is what it talks about. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing. You know, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Sickness, it's a, when it comes on a child of God, it's exalting itself above the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So make sure you fight anything that is contrary to the word of God. Fight it with all you have, your teeth and all. So we talked about knowing where you stand, right? Another thing is this thing of having an aggressive attitude, guys. One thing I've learned about Christianity is that <laughs> if you're a chilled person, you're going to lose out on a lot of things. Like, if you're just going to be chilled, you're going to lose out on a lot, right? Um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 to 27. It's 
It's that example Pastor Tate likes using. Like sickness is literally like a snake. Imagine a snake coming in your house and you're like, ah, we can share this house. Like you can be my roommate. No, like sickness is just that thing. It's coming to kill you. It's coming to bite you, right? It's a snake coming to bite you, right? So, but as long as you can tolerate it, you will live with it. That's one thing. If you can tolerate sickness, you will live with it. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Be angry. I love this scripture, right? I, the reason I love it is because from the time I've been growing up until maybe three years ago, I've always misinterpreted it, so it's always stuck <laughs> because <laughs> I've mis misinterpreted it for so long. Uh, it says, be, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, right? So what this scripture is saying is, let's maybe go to the next verse. Neither give place to the devil. So uh, let's go back to 26. So I know this scripture when it's taught or how I understood it was that you can be angry, but when the sun goes down, you must forgive, you know? It's like so weird. Like God is saying, you can sin, but make sure you make it right before the sun goes down. Like, what? You know? Um, so, um, but what, what this scripture is talking about, it's not talking about anger, like, um, like against anger towards people. It's talking about that holy anger where you hate things of darkness, you hate uh, things of, of the devil and stuff like that, right? And when it says that, do not let uh, the sun go down upon your wrath. It's saying, never let that fire go down, like that anger you have against the devil. Never let it set, you know. Uh, so that's what it's saying. And then the next verse says, neither give place to the devil, right? So it's just telling you, Kuri, never give the devil a chance in all your days, in everything, from the smallest of things to the biggest, never ever give him a chance. You need to hate darkness. You need to hate anything that smells the devil. Be it sickness, be it gossip, be it, be it whatever. Like when you give the devil, like the thing is the devil has no emotional intelligence. Like you'll give him a small thing, he wants everything. You know, so never give place to the devil, even in sickness, from a headache to cancer. It doesn't matter how small, never give him a chance. Amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. So it's an attitude, like, as a child of God, that's the attitude you just need to have. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And it's what? It's the violent to take it by force. For you, like this world, you need to understand that it's a fallen world. Everything will naturally go towards the negative. Like, it's like the weirdest thing that you can, you can be among people who are living in divine health and it's not contagious, but be among people who are sick and you can catch it. It's like so twisted like that, that... Uh, you need to be very, very forceful in terms of appropriating what God has done for you. So you need to be enforcing it. It's not naturally going to happen. It's a fallen world. So those things, from your healing to your prosperity, it's not naturally going to happen. You need to enforce that. That's why this kind of attitude is so key. You need to be violent in enforcing that. So the same it is for healing, right? I, loved, I love how uh, we were in life group in Iron and... Oh, guys, if you don't attend life group, I'm not, I'm, you're missing out. Like, I, I was loved the other day. Um, I had to urgently do something, and because we usually rotate life groups, and six o'clock passed, and quarter past six passed. Then I'm like, but I can't miss life group. So we were like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to attend Chosen for the second time. Because, like, we just can't miss life groups. So I just don't understand how people miss life groups because Chosen starts at 7. So we're like, okay, we'll attend Chosen for the second time. So please, guys, do not miss life group. Anyway, we were at Iron, and um, Lebu said something so amazing. Hi, Lebu. Um, she was talking about appropriate. You know how we are always talking about how faith appropriates um, anything in the grace package, you know, appropriating, appropriating. And she puts such a nice definition to appropriate. She says, it's taking something by force without permission 
for your own use. It's just stubbornness, you know. And I feel like it exactly talks about um, that, that the scripture in Matthew that we're reading, that the violent take it by force. For you to appropriate anything, it's going to have to be violently by force. Amen. So we spoke about attitude. The next thing is um, just applying the faith principles that we've been taught, guys. I found it so amazing that CV's on working on water. Like, I'm going to remind you of these principles. You need to apply them, and I'll add on to some of... Um, actually, I'll add on. You guys have the recordings of the ones we've gone through, amen? Uh, I'll remind you maybe of one day. Let's go to Mark 11, verse 23. Mark 11, verse 23. It says, <clears throat> For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but, sh but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever what he saith. Right? Um, and then the, Pastor Tate spoke about that, right? That you immediately when you say something, say you find yourself in a situation where you need healing. Immediately when you say, I am healed. Or immediately when you command your body to align to the word of God. Believe that it's done there and there. Don't expect to see the results there and there. It will manifest. Remember we were taught this with the scripture. It will manifest. And healing, healing is literally a process, guys. It's like... There's, there's stuff that happen in, instantaneously, but those are what we call miracles. It's not a plain healing. It's a miraculous healing because it's going against the natural recovery of the body, right? So that's when a miracle is happening. But healing in itself is your body recovering back to health, right? So it's a process. So if you're going to say, I am healed, and because, uh, say, I had a cut here, my skin didn't immediately go back together and you say you're not healed. It's just, it's not how it works, right? It's a process. My skin is going to grow back on, but the point is that I am healed. I was listening to this testimony. This lady had, um, I don't know what to call it, but this big thing here, right? And she, she went to a healing service and just believed God without anyone laying hands on her, believed God for her healing. And she said, I'm healed, I'm healed. And then the next year in that conference, well, the next day, the weekend, she testified that I'm healed, you know. But that thing was still there. Everyone was seeing it. So it was already a bit awkward and weird. People were like, okay, but they let it slide. Next year, the conference was happening yearly. Next year, she went to the conference again, and then the weekend of testimonies came, and she went again, testified, it was there. Hi. And then the people start now saying, guys, please, you need to not let this woman testify because it's, it's awkward out there, you know. And, 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 and this woman was, went to God and was just like, you know what, they don't want me to testify in me. I know I'm healed, but just for them, can't you just, for them to see that I'm healed? And... Kid you not, the woman, the next time she went to testify, the thing was gone. She's like, I've been trying to tell you guys that I'm healed. But you guys wanted to see like this physical manifestation. So when you know in you that you are healed, you are healed. You don't need to see anything, you know, for you to believe that you are healed. Amen. Amen. It's just the same with that, what Pastor Tate was teaching about with that fig tree. Like how Jesus just said it and left. Like the tree looked like it was not cursed at all. It was still well and it was still there. But it, it, it was cursed from the roots, you know. And Jesus, imagine Jesus standing there like not sure if it's cursed or what, you know. So just know that <laughs> you just need to know the authority that you have. Amen. Colossians chapter, six, chapter 2 verse 6. I like using this scripture to just illustrate how you should be uh, using your faith. It says, as ye, therefore, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, right, the Lord, so walk ye in him. You received Christ. How did you receive Christ Jesus? How did you get born again? By faith, right? And then you confess. You say you confess the Lordship of Jesus. Someone told you you confessed it. You didn't see anything. You just confessed because you had faith. And then after that... 
You were, still, you were not even seeing the effects of being born again. You were still probably as mean as a snake. You were still, you know, that same day, you were still like, there were no things that could tell you that you are born again, but you believed that it is done, you know. So this scripture is saying the same way you did it, walk ye in him, walk this life like that. In terms of faith, when, when you say something is done, it is done. Don't wait to see the after effects for you to be convinced that it is done. When you do that, it's not even faith anymore. I mean, you can see it. It's like, yeah. So that, 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 that is something. Another thing we need to learn is really controlling our tongue, guys. It's not, that's the biggest thing. Like, it's not everything that you have to say. Like, <laughs> literally sometimes just is no wonder sometimes they god would just mute people because people and controlling their tongue is just you know let's go to james chapter three sometimes i wish god would just mute me i'm like god at this moment can you just mute me <laughs> james three verse one let's start we'll do verse one to five it says my brethren be not uh, many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Right? Next. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And able also to bridle the whole body. A person who's learned not to offend in word can literally, if you can control your tongue, just know that you can control the rest of your body. Your tongue is the hardest thing to control, hardest part of your body to control. And if you master that, know that you'll be able to control your whole body. When you tell your body that you are healed, best believe it will align to that, right? Um, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may uh, obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which thou, which uh, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor, the governor listen, listeth. Oh, I told you that if it's long, <laughs> if it's long, <laughs> you, you, lighter, ne? <laughs> Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rider, wherever the pilot desires. Next verse. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest the little fire kindles, right? So the tongue is that thing. As much as it's the smallest member, it's the hardest to control. And if you teach yourself and train yourself to control that, you'll train yourself to control your whole body. Amen. Um, another thing with this in the same light. I, I was laughing. I was, <laughs> I think I heard someone say this. They were like, uh, you know, some of you, you can't even tell your body what to do. Your body, when you tell your body what to do, it's like, no, 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 the powers have changed, have turned. <laughs> like the tables have turned. You last told me what to do 20 years ago. Now, I was laughing, like, you know. So there are a lot of things that you can do to help your body to be subject to you, right? Um, one of the things is learning to control your tongue. Another thing is fasting. Fasting is key in terms of, uh, uh, how do I say this? In terms of faith, guys. I know people downplay fasting, but the reason, be honest with yourselves. The reason you downplay fasting is because it's hard to do and you want to act like it's not necessary. It's very necessary. Uh, I always downplay fasting. I'm like, but you don't need to fast. But that's because I know it's hard. You know, it's hard. And fasting doesn't really change God or um, what God has given you, but it helps you to minimize doubt, you know, to operate better in faith because you are just, you, you just remove yourself from like, how do I put it? From, from carnality, basically. It's like you're more inclined to spiritual things or to the spirit. You just train yourself in that manner. And you don't, like, I think the best kind of fasting is, you know, those people that just live a fasted life. 
not necessarily to say, I'm going to go on a 40-day or whatever. But even that is good for you. But fasting is key. Fasting anything. I know people say you can fast anything, your cell phone, your what, what. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. You can literally fast anything because you are just training your flesh to be subject to you. But <laughs> fasting food is the most effective. Let's be real. Your, your body will scream and scream when you decide. I mean, just trying to follow those diets, your body will be screaming. Imagine fasting. So fasting is, is, is that thing. It helps you guys. It helps you be in control of your body, right? It helps you be your spirit meant to be the one leading, not your body leading, you know, not your carnal senses leading, but your spiritual senses leading. So fasting is key, guys. When you get an opportunity, please do do it. Do you know that's the word? I, I, I found this very interesting. Do you know that self-control there in the fruits of the spirits? Maybe we go back to it. Where is it? Galatians 5.22, where you say, I have the fruits, the fruits of the spirit, self-control. Let's, let me even, open your esword, guys. I hope you have your esword. Your esword, your esword. Galatians 5.22. Did you find self-control there? 23. It's what? Temperance. Do you see the word there? It's, it's self-control. But if you look where it originates, it's from, it's actually saying self-controlled in appetite. It's actually specific to appetite. Do you know that? That's the main thing where it comes from, in appetite. So this thing of saying, being controlled in that area, guys, it's very spiritual. It hel when I say spiritual, I'm not saying holy. I'm saying it helps you walk in the spirit. Amen. Another, the last thing I'll look at uh, in terms of this area is taking every opportunity to exercise your faith. Take every opportunity. Like, just see it as an opportunity. Don't even be offended when symptoms present themselves or when he, um, sickness tries to attack you. Take it as an opportunity to exercise your faith. I know people say, ah, it doesn't matter. The same faith that heals a headache can heal cancer. Um, it is true, it's the same faith, it's a, the faith is the same one you received, ne? <laughs> but uh, guys, it's, it's not the same because the level of unbelief when you are faced with cancer is not the same of the level of unbelief when you have a headache. So you don't, don't be fooled to be like, ah, I can just wake up one day and deal with cancer. No, 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 no. Train yourself with, from your headache, train yourself to be like, okay, with the headache. Because the level of unbelief there is not as bad. It's just a headache, you know. But now with cancer, when they're saying your cells, what, what, radiation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is just coming at once. The level of unbelief that will just dilute that faith is just a lot, you know. And that's why people fail with that. It's not like cancer is so special. It is true. It's the same anointing né, that can deal with it. But you, the problem is you. The level of unbelief that I tell you when you are dealing with the bigger thing. That's what I'm saying. In everything from toothache to what, take it as an opportunity to train up your faith, right? So um, that's what I, and I love this scripture. I think we did it at Bible Fest, Deuteronomy 7.22. This is just how it works. And every time you have a victory, it's every time you can take up something bigger. Every time you can take up something bigger, you're moving to bigger and bigger things, right? Um, it says this, it says, and the Lord, I love this, we did it at Bible Fest. It says, when the Lord was giving them the promised land, right, he didn't give it to them all at once. He gave them in parts, in bits and pieces, right? It's the same, your promised land is what, your grace package, right? You grow in grace. It's not like you just... You know, you grow in it. It says, and the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once, lest the beast of the field become too numerous for you. In other versions, it says, lest you are overwhelmed. 
It's the same thing with, with healing. Always take every small thing as an opportunity. You're yeah, stepping up your faith, stepping up your faith, stepping up your faith until, you know, you're just stepping up your faith until you get to a point where you actually live in divine health. Like, it just has no hold over you. Amen. So don't. So if you have a headache, don't just say parado. If you have a, you know, just make sure you, 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 you exercise your faith. You take it as an opportunity to exercise your faith. I mean, at the end of the day, things like um, gifts of the spirit and uh, like gifts of healing and medicine and everything, God gave them because he loves us. He understands that sometimes it's just too much for you. Sometimes you're not at that point where you can deal with it. And then that's when you can step out and take those things. But where you can handle, guys, use your faith. So I'm not saying now you're sick and you'd rather die instead of Go to the doctor. That's not what I'm saying. We always say, have a what? Thank you. We are a church of balance. Ne? I'm not saying don't take your meds. Don't. I'm saying where you can handle, use it as an opportunity to build your faith. And then where you see that this is overwhelming me, like how it says, that, like where it's just overwhelming and you just can't handle, you have these things available because God loves you. He knew. Imagine if the only way you could get healed is by building up your faith. Some people would die in the process where they're still trying to take in the words, they're trying to do what. So those things are available for your benefit, but where you can, take it as an opportunity to build your faith. Amen. And then lastly, guys, there is something called divine health. We don't always have to be appropriating healing. As you grow, as we grow, not you, only me too as well. As I grow in this, uh, this life of healing and divine health, you get to a point where really, let's go to Psalm 91 maybe, where really sickness has no hold over you. Like the devil is not stupid, but he's stupid. Like he... At some point, he just knows that, what else can I do to this person, you know? I've brought everything, I've done this, and he knows that you can handle all these things. And at some point, he'll just flee, like the Bible says, you resist him and he flees. Let's go to Psalm 91. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord... He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of uh, the fowler and from the noisome pestilence, right? He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow which uh, by day, nor for the pestilence that, wo that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So there is that place, like how we read in Exodus 23, where sickness is turned off yeah. in you, right? Um, shall not come nigh thee. Next. Only with thine eye shall thou behold and see. Uh, only with thine eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, right? Which is all of these sicknesses and whatnot. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my, uh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. What's the condition of getting to this point? Abiding. Same thing. Abiding. It's always abiding. Just, guys, the word of God is greater than anything you could ever need. I don't know how to express it. Sometimes we, feel, we end up feeling like we are preaching the same thing over and over, but that's because that's literally it. Everything just points back to the word of God. Everything just goes back to the word of God. So even in healing, in things of healing and divine health, just abiding in the Lord, abiding, it will build the necessary faith you need to live a divine, a, a, a life in divine health, a life of healing. So abiding in the word of God, that's, that's what it is at the end of the day. And let's just always be growing in grace, guys. These things are for our benefit. Make sure you find out, like this is not an exhaustive list. All these points I was giving, healing is a big thing. There's so many things. Unforgiveness, it hinders healing. 
uh, not being in joy. They, it's a long. So we've started something. So you go back home and find out everything else that affects healing, that would hinder your healing, everything else that would promote you getting your healing, you know. And, and we're going, it's, this is a challenge I'm giving in life group. Everyone is going to have something I didn't mention, right? You're going to find something that, will, that can hinder your healing, hinder you appropriating healing and you'll find something that promotes you or gives you, puts you at an advantage for appropriating healing, right? And uh, you're, you're, you're going to teach it, right, in life group. And um, <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> Yeah, so let's, let's do that because this is literally not an exhaustive list. I was just giving you some things that I've been learning in terms of healing and in terms of divine health. So, but the point is literally, guys, to grow in grace. Whatever is in the grace package, make sure you are growing in it. Make sure, like Jesus didn't die for nothing. You're not a Christian for nothing, you know. We just need to see that. It's like people, sometimes we don't need to preach the gospel, guys. People just need to see us growing in grace and they'll be like, I want that, you know. And it's not available to them, so they need to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, so that's why the Bible speaks of things like even Jesus, it says he grew in grace or he grew in favor. It says grace is multiplied to you through what? Knowledge, the word of God. That's how it's multiplied. So it means you can grow in it, right? It says uh, he gives more grace to the humble. So there's more grace to get, you know, when you are humble. When you're humble, it's when you're aligning yourself to the word of God. Whatever the word of God says, you say, that's it, right? So you, you don't have things that exalt itself above the knowledge of God.